Well, so here we are on New Year's Day, and it's hard to believe it's actually 2017. I have to admit, I still feel like it's Christmas. I love these days in between, that liminal time after Christmas and before the new year begins. These days have always been for me a time to snuggle down at home, to rest from all the work that goes into Advent and Christmas Eve, and for me to watch all of the Christmas movies I didn't have time to see during Advent. I grew up loving old Christmas movies, Miracle on 34th Street, White Christmas, It's a Wonderful Life. But in recent years, my new favorite has been Love Actually. Go ahead, big size, I know. Which Fred has said he will never watch again. So the week before Christmas, when the Fifield boardroom became Christmas central for First Church, we put some movies up on the big screen as we stuffed 1,500 programs and became Christmas elves preparing the children's gifts. I was so excited when Miss Julianne suggested Love Actually because I was finally getting to watch a Christmas movie before Christmas. The premise of that movie is simple and it's silly. It all takes place in London, which these days looks better and better to me, but that's another sermon. The movie is a series of vignettes about the lives of people who are connected in a myriad of ways. The stories are sweet and sad, filled with joy and heartbreak. And in some insidious way, the movie each year helps me remember that life with all its triumphs and its complications is still good. In the beginning of the movie, the now aging heartthrob, Huyu Grant, sets the stage for the intertwined stories. As we see these beautiful scenes of people arriving and being welcomed, in his wonderful British accent, Grant says, whenever I get gloomy with the state of the world, I think about the arrivals gate at Heathrow Airport. Airports are magical places. They are where we begin and end many of our travels, but they are seldom what we remember of our journeys. I love the story of the Magi that Stephanie read, the wise ones who searched and found Jesus. We usually weave them into the Christmas story found in the Gospel of Luke along with the shepherds and the angels, but their story is only found in the Gospel of Matthew. And what a story it is. We don't know if there were three or six or eight magi. We're told they brought three gifts for the child, three gifts of great value. And even though we only get a glimpse of their journey, I have always believed it must have changed their lives dramatically. In many ways, the entire Christmas story is a series of small vignettes about the lives of people who were connected in a myriad of ways. Not all the stories have happy endings. There is fear and danger, monsters lurking at every corner, heroes and villains. And yet we are told in the Gospel of Luke's version that Mary pondered all these things in her heart. She pondered, she held them in her heart. Because in the midst of gloom, that was present, hanging over that miracle. She saw and heard light and love. For some of us, 2016 has been an amazing year. New babies, weddings, promotions, graduations, all good things. For others of us, 2016 has been more than a gloomy year. It has been easy to believe on bad days that all is lost and on the better days to hope maybe it was all a bad dream. For most of us, this year has had its highs and lows, and even if the rest of the year had been pretty good, the last two months seemed for many of us to pull a deep, dark cloud over all the rest. 
As much as I hate to say it, we may need to step back and get some perspective. This is a time when we need to listen for the wisdom of the ages. And we need to look for the wise ones that are still coming, the ones that can help us on our journey. As many times as I've read the narrative of the Magi and the Christmas story, I have never thought of them as people filled with doom and gloom. I think of them instead as people who, filled with optimism and hope, went in search of something magnificent. All was not right with the world, and yet off they went, without a map, without a clear destination, without assurances of safety. And they looked for people who could help them find what they were seeking. But they were wise enough to know that some of the people who were in positions of authority and offered help were not to be trusted. This year has made me take a different view of whom I trust for wisdom. Some of the usual sources have proven, sadly, unreliable. So I have had to go back to those who have guided me all along my journey. Great practical theologians like Henry Nouwen and Frederick Buechner, whose books I haven't pulled off the shelves in years. Brave justice seekers like Dorothy Day and Martin Luther King Jr. Mystics and contemplatives like Thomas Merton and Julian of Norwich, whose quote for the ages still, still sustains me. These wise ones from the past are like an anchor for me in the midst of an uncertain storm. But just relying on wise ones from the past won't get us where we need to go. The wise ones of our day, though, are not always easy to find. You have to search for them. And if your heart is open, you will find them in the most unusual places. They're generally not in your Facebook feed or on the evening news, although every once in a while I think they are in the Sunday New York Times. Often they aren't the people who get the most press or the biggest book contracts. Instead, they can be found working tirelessly in inner city schools or clinics for the underserved. They can be found praying in convents and monasteries. They can be residents of nursing homes and children in daycare centers. They most certainly are not going to look just like you or speak the same language. You may even need a translator. But we always have to be ready to receive wisdom because we never know when and where the wise ones will appear. The Magi didn't call and make an appointment to come visit baby Jesus. They just appeared, bringing their gifts and their wisdom. So we have to learn to look and listen and to open the doors or we will miss the treasures the wise ones in disguise are bringing to us and our journeys. Then maybe we won't worry quite so much about how we got here or where we will end up, but instead we will look for the wise ones who still come and we'll look for the fellow travelers who join us on the way. So this morning, I do say Happy New Year to all of you. May this be a year of wisdom and a year of love for all of us. Amen.